What's up guys? It's Sydney and Dustin and we are here to answer your questions with our very own Q&A. What's up guys? We are here to answer your questions since I'm a little bit out of the workout game right now. We wanted to give you a Q&A because you guys always ask questions. A lot of them I see commonly so I want to answer some questions for you. And thank you guys for submitting them on Facebook, on Instagram, all of the social media outlets. I want to help you any way that I can right now since I'm physically unable. Let's talk about what you can learn from your nutrition, from your workouts, all your questions. Um, Dustin's here with me. He's going to be carving some pumpkins just since it's fall and keeping with the theme. The first question, and um, a lot of you all have asked Sydney this, it's how are you doing? How's mm. your foot? What's going on? Uh, I'm doing okay. For those of you who don't know, I am currently in a boot. Um, my foot is feeling all right. It's the healing process. If anyone has been through an injury or, you know, mine's a little bit different. We went through a little more serious situation, but injuries take time and I've never had a huge injury myself. I've never, I was lucky enough my whole college career, all of my athletic career to never have a big injury. Um, so this is definitely testing my patience. Um, I have to keep my foot elevated as often as possible. Can't put any weight on it for probably close to six weeks. Um, so it's testing my patience, but it's also trying or kind of flipping the script for me and making me think more in terms of gratitude. Like I'm so thankful that we're both here and we're both okay. Um, for the most part, it could have been a lot worse, and so I'm just thankful to be able to still continue to give to you guys in this way. The foot will heal. Um, it's coming along fine. Everything that the doctor wants to see happening is happening. Um, it's healing fine, so just pray for patience. <laughs> so what exactly happened? We'll put some uh, x-rays up here. Yeah, so basically what, uh, the, what happened when we were ambushed was that we had a bullet went through my foot, uh, coming from the inside, exiting the outside of right behind my ankle bone and right in front of my Achilles. Um, it missed my Achilles by about a millimeter, but it did fracture my heel bone. Um, and I'm lucky to say that my Achilles is still attached. However, I can't put weight on my heel bone because if I were to put pressure on it before it's healed, it could crack a little more and then of course my Achilles could detach. And if anyone's broken a bone, you know it takes some time to heal. So I'm just waiting on that healing process. It could have been worse. Uh, the nerves are tingling all the time. They're healing like a bruise. They got uh, trauma, but they weren't severed. So my foot is constantly, constantly tingling, um, ranging in severity from uh, your foot waking up from when it's asleep all the way up to I just stepped on a nail. It, it ranges all the time. So just thankful that I still have nerve control, that they're not severed, and that's just a, kind of a waiting game right now. Denisha Lane says, Hi Sydney, hope things are going well. Do you know what to do with a sore back? Um, do you have to stretch it out? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's only going to be a stretch treatment. Um, there's so many answers to this and I actually did a video with a doctor of physical therapy, Dr. Matt Crandall. I'm going to link that here and uh, make sure you guys check that out. That will probably answer a lot more of your questions. It can range from soreness to injury, so I don't want to say one thing, uh, but check out that video I did with Dr. Matt Crandall on how to release some lower back pain. Okay. Megan Cronenweth Bickett says, my question for you, maybe a request for a future workout challenge would be how to build endurance. The HIIT training is my favorite, but I would love to know how to increase my endurance. For example, long runs, longer bouts of cardio, any health conditioning that way would help. Um, so for endurance training, you're going to have to kind of practice what you're training for. So in terms of the HIIT training, it's more short bouts of tiny bursts of very intense exercise. Where your intensity goes up, the time that you can do that intensity effectively goes down. So I wouldn't necessarily say you need too many high intensity interval workouts. I would say go more for the AMRAP workouts where I give you a time and you work as long as possible in that time without stopping. Work on your breathing primarily. As you know, running long distances, your breathing has to be established. It has to be established in the beginning of the run so you're not out of breath quickly. 
um, but definitely work on those long runs. Keep inching up your times. Maybe start with a mile, go up to two. Um, but breathing is key and also just make sure that you're not working um, too heavy on your weights. I know that like the intensity is the same thing as resistance. You have heavy resistance, you're not going to be able to do as many reps as effectively with proper technique. So lower the weight, make sure your breathing is efficient, and uh, practice what you're training for. Just go a little longer each time you're training in that way. Marissa Hawkins Baldwin says, I cannot seem to lose leg fat and stomach fat. What am I not doing? I am 5'8", 145 pounds, but I have body fat. I eat well and work out three to four times a week. To go into your description of how you're trying to lose the fat, um, eating well and working out a couple times a week um, are not going to technically, I mean, what is eating well, right? It can't really be defined. If you couldn't really tell me what your calories and your macros are, that's where you really need to hone in. Any way you need to lose, any time you want to lose body fat, it's got to be dialed in on your nutrition. You've got to work out five to six times a week. Um, so I would work on upping the times that you're working out and work on dialing in your nutrition really good. Mary Beth Marshall Motley says, how do you track your calories burned? Um, I always use my Apple Watch. Um, and it's linked up with an app on the phone, but um, I, up until now, I've always been an athlete, so I wasn't ever training in a way that was focused on calorie burning. Um, it was just kind of like max performance. You do the best that you can for that practice period, and then you eat well. Um, so up until we started this channel, I've never actually tracked calories, but now that I do, I use uh, Apple Watch Series 3. Jennifer Jordan Miller says, should my food intake be different on workout days? Uh, more specifically on my days when I have a workout, should I be eating more or less of a certain thing, like more carbs or more protein? On my rest days, should I be eating less carbs? You definitely don't need to intake as many calories on your rest days as you do on your workout days, just because at the baseline, uh, you know, making progress, whether it's losing fat or gaining muscle, it all has to kind of be a deficit in your calories and in and your calories out. Um, so stick with the macronutrient breakdown that you're working on, whether that's the one that I prescribed, the 40% protein, 30% carbs, 30% fats. Stick to that ratio of your calories, but maybe dial your calories back a little bit, maybe a couple hundred calories. Um, for instance, on workout days, I do about 1,800, 1,900 calories. Non-workout days, I'm around 1,500. Um, you're not burning as much, so you won't need to eat as much. And Linda Rizzo says, will you be adding any beginner slash low impact videos 30 minutes, of course, after you heal? Yeah, uh, I'll definitely have to start with low impact for sure. Um, I don't technically want to do all 30 minute videos when I come back in and I don't want to rush it. So uh, I would say 30 to 50 minutes, but they will be low impact for a while. doesn't mean they will be less effective, but working with healing a bone, you guys know how that is. Coming back from an injury, you cannot rush the process. So um, yeah, probably lower impact. Um, and I always make workouts from beginner to advanced. So I'll give you ways to dial it back if you need to modify, and I'll give you ways to step it up if you can. You're gonna like this one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Jessica Michelle Boots says, I've been doing your workouts for a while now. Everything is going great. However, I notice my booty is becoming a bit smaller. Is there a secret to maintaining yours? Perhaps heavy weights versus cardio? Um, on the heavy weights versus cardio question, yes, you do want to go with heavier weights. Um, cardio will kind of decrease the development of your fat switch muscles, which are thicker, um, a little bit thicker in fiber. Uh, fibers, I should say, uh, but definitely want to decrease the long cardio and increase the resistance that you're using. I, I've always said that, you know, fat is going to come off of your body wherever it is genetically pre predispositioned to do so. Um, so if it comes off your butt first, that's okay. That just means you have room to build the muscle on the butt. So stay away from the light pulsing exercises. Go with some heavy squats, heavy dumbbells. Increase that resistance effectively as you get stronger and you keep your technique in check. So yes, go for the heavy resistance, heavy dumbbells. You gotta keep the booty, right? Keep the booty. Sarah Luoma, Luoma three <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. says, <laughs> Pumpkin or apple cider for fall baking? Yes. Yes. 
What? Pumpkin or apple cider? Is that a question? I guess. Which one do you use for bacon or prefer? Pumpkin. Okay. Just because it's seasonal. I just like it seasonal. You don't get to use pumpkin that often. <laughs> oh my god. Tarzy Lace says, I've been trying to think of a good question, but all I can think of are the little things like, who's yours and Dustin's favorite band slash singer? Ooh, I'm your favorite singer. Just kidding. <laughs> um, I will say one of the things that uh, connects us most is we really both love music. Um, I would say I like more genres of music than Dustin does. What does that mean? Where, what kind of music do you hate? <laughs> he does not like country music, uh, but... I like some of it. Some of it's just depressing. Most of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, as you can see, the truth comes out. Um, I did get him to go to a Zac Brown concert once. He really liked that. That was good. To be fair, yeah. Um, but we really love a lot of music. We like, you know, R&B. We like hip-hop. We like... One, our favorite concert... It was The Weeknd. Definitely The Weeknd. Uh, he had an awesome concert. Also, Post Malone. He had a really good concert. Um, yeah, I think that's one of the things that bonds us most, or that we find mutually exciting, is concerts and music. M. Maria says, how much time did it take you to get in the shape that you are in now? Um, well, to be honest, when I, I've always been an athlete my whole life, and then you know, last year I had a really bad year with uh, both of our family's health, from losing my brother, Dustin's grandpa, Dustin's mom, um, so, I've always been an athlete, and I've always been fit, uh, but I have never had as low body fat percentage as I did when I started this channel. And you can kind of go back when I started the channel early on in the channel, you could see I was a little more fluffy and there wasn't anything wrong with my body. I can just tell that I have leaned out um, as we have done the channel and uh, I've stayed consistent as my dedication to you guys and to myself. Um, so I would say between probably March and June, um, I got in the best shape of my life. Or March and I September. Think, I think you're in a different type of shape. That's true, um, yeah. When you were in college, you were a whole lot stronger. Mm. You were more explosive. That's where now you're doing like longer style workouts, leaning out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, training less for explosive power and more for uh, hit workouts and leanness. Annie's Wine House wants to know if you drink wine. Um, sometimes, maybe, or what do you like to drink? Uh, Annie, you're not going to love my answer for this, and I hope this doesn't decrease the love we have for each other. <laughs> but uh, I'm not a big wine drinker. I'm not a big drinker in general, but if we do have a drink, it's uh, normally like a whiskey. Or that might be my fault. Yeah, I mean it's... Yeah, we're not huge drinkers. Or she's she's definitely not a huge drinker, but... Well, you're not either. Yeah. But I would say it's a whiskey or a cognac. <laughs> Confessions. But yeah, we really don't drink that often. I think it's, it always just makes me start my day less productive the next day, and I can always tell that I'm dehydrated, and so much of my job relies on me being in, in you know, the best physical condition possible to bring you guys the best workouts, the best version of myself, so I feel like I'm taking that away from you and from myself when I do drink, so we just really don't drink that often. We just prefer food. <laughs> that is for sure. <laughs> Susan F7 wants to know, what do you think of diet program? I think the word diet is so frustrating, um, just because I think it, it comes with the connotation of deprivation, um, like I'm on a diet and you people always think, okay, what are you not eating, right? I think focus less on the word diet and focus on learning how to eat for your lifestyle. And focus less on, I'm on a four week uh, cleanse or you know, whatever it is. Like in my challenge groups, I try to teach you guys how to eat for your lifestyle instead of going on a diet. Um, I think mentally it messes with you because you think diet, you're gonna come off of it soon, right? It's something that you're on temporarily. So I don't love the word diet. I think nutrition programs and learning how to eat so you can sustain it for a lifestyle is definitely the way to go. Brooke Mays, y'all. Do you have any tips slash tricks for days of low motivation slash bad weather? Do you prefer, do you prefer morning or evening workouts and what? 
Uh, low motivation and bad weather, I would say pre-workout. <laughs> um, honestly, I think accountability partners are huge. I think I hope to be that for you guys, just knowing that someone's going to show up for you every day here, um, because we don't all have fit friends. I know Brooke is from uh, my hometown of Sissonville, West Virginia, um, and you know there's not a ton of fitness environment there. I don't know if you still live there, Brooke, so I'm sorry if you don't, but um, I would say an accountability partner. I would say making sure there's a routine and it's a, a an appointment with yourself that you can't negotiate on. As for morning or evening workouts, I have been working out in the afternoon just because I have early morning clients and then we film the workouts and then I have evening clients, um, but it's all what, what you can sustain without totally flipping your lifestyle around if you know for sure that you either get off late or you don't know when you're going to get off and you're really tired after work get it in in the morning and let your body get used to the mornings if you're not a morning person and you know you're going to sleep in and skip it or it's very easy for you to press snooze and uh, you can promise yourself that you'll do it after work get an accountability partner meet them at the gym and go after work or just use my workout daily upload and take to the gym after work Sloney Baloney. <laughs> Sloan. Uh, are you looking for a researcher to join your team? Oh, uh, Sloan, I love research. I love uh, I love the scientific aspect of fitness. But uh, yeah, I would love to talk to you about that. I, I always try to give the most up-to-date research-based knowledge to you guys. So yeah, Sloan, let's let's chat about that. Sandy Barnes 23. What is your favorite fall? Treat. I don't know if it's a treat necessarily, but <laughs> what are you doing? Um, I don't know if it's a treat necessarily, but I love soup, and I feel like it's not cool enough until fall, at least in the Carolinas, uh, to eat soup. So I would say like chili um, potato soup. Dustin makes a really good potato soup. Uh, I would say that's my my fall excitement. Pumpkin pie, <laughs> obviously. I make a good potato soup. Yeah. You made it once, it was good. It's <laughs> probably progressive. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember ever making it. This video is not sponsored by progressive. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Imagine, innovate, inspire wants to know, what do you recommend doing when you just can't lose those last five to seven LBs? Um, hmm. I would say, Number one, the, the scale is, is kind of a hard measurement to go off of. So I would say pay close attention to number one, why you like that five pounds lower weight on your body. If it's the way that you look, it may not be your weight. It may be what your body is composed of in terms of fat versus muscle. Um, so I would say check your body composition. You might have noticed a lot more progress there than on the scale. You're definitely probably going to. Um, but I would also say it's as you reach certain milestones, you're gonna to have to change things up a little bit as far as intensity and your focus on your nutrition. Um, it's gonna be heavily on nutrition, but if you're doing the same workout, kind of getting used to it, you're likely kind of not going as hard. So make sure you're going intense in your workouts, but number one, make sure your nutrition is really, really spot on. The uh, mandatin. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> what are your food guilty pleasures? Um, food guilty pleasures, all food, no, I'm just kidding, uh, I would say sweets are my guilty pleasure, I always. And the Amba, Therese, any, any advice on how I can stay active on busy days at work? Um, in terms of fitting your workout in, I would say if you know you're going to be busy, you know it's for him, it was uh, year end or quarter end. Uh, month and he knew it was going to be busy and when he was in accounting um, so if you know you're going to have that type of week that type of day get your workout in before work no questions asked because after work you're going to be drained and you're going to be a lot more likely to put it off but as far as staying active throughout the day uh, what I always told him was to obviously you know continue to drink water as much as you can have a, a bottle on your desk all the time but also set alarms on your phone for every hour depending on how your environment is Maybe every two hours if it's weird that you get up that much, but definitely set alarms on your phone just to tell you to get up, take a lap around your office, around your building. Just get up, stretch even, go to the bathroom and stretch. Um, the more active you can kind of be, and I know it's hard when you're busy, but um, just kind of
kind of make it work however you can in your environment. ATX check. How long have you been in the fitness or has it always been your thing? Um, been an athlete my whole life. I've been in fitness professionally for four years. I was a college athlete. I played all the sports growing up. Um, so college athlete from 2009 to 2013. Went back to nursing school after that. Still worked out nursing school for a year and then 2014 I got my personal training certification and fitness nutrition specialist certification and uh, have been professionally in the fitness world ever since 2014 so four years professionally. T.F. Lanigan, where to start and what order to do your videos? Depends on what you're looking for. I do upload in a way that you can just jump on tomorrow and follow it from there. I upload in a way that I would program your workouts um, so I'm not doing arms, 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 legs, 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 you know, I'm doing them in a way that you can jump on tomorrow and just go from there. Um, there's not like a beginner's progression into my workouts, but I do give you modifications within every workout. So you can jump on and start tomorrow and I upload every single day. So just continue to follow that. Um, if you're looking for accessory type workouts, like if you already have a program that you like, um, and you're looking for maybe just butt workouts, just arm workouts, just abs, just cardio, whatever. Um, I do have playlists where they are all specifically categorized, so you can jump in there and find what you're looking for if it's not an everyday program. D A A N I Yazia. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm bad at this. Uh, <laughs> what do you eat to stay fit? I work out, but don't know what to eat. What I eat is going to be broken down into proteins, carbs, and fats. I just try and stay with clean food. Um, try and stay away from the processed, sugary foods and stay more towards the natural um, meats, veggies, grains, seeds, beans. Um, but it, it will depend on the amount of the, the things that you eat based off of your weight and your lifestyle. Um, so I'm going to link my 30 day program in the description below. It's going to teach you how to eat, how to calculate the calories that are good for your body and your lifestyle, um, and then I break it down into how to break those calories down into macronutrients. So uh, check the link below, I'll link that there for you. Dil Dilchia Cost. Yes, you're getting worse. <laughs> I don't know. How to not feel guilty after eating something bad slash unhealthy. I would say take the experience that you were in and learn from why you did go for that craving, um, whether it's emotional eating or whether it's just not being prepared with your own food or um, it's the friends that you consistently hang out with that are only just eating and drinking bad, or not bad food, but not nutrient dense food. Um, take the situation that you were in when you gave into those cravings and try and learn from it. Uh, maybe you're more prepared next week. Maybe you bring a healthy alternative to the party. Uh, but as far as feeling bad about it, um, I will say there's like a hormonal disadvantage when you kind of linger on eating bad. Your brain releases cortisol, which actually increases your insulin level and it causes you to want sweets even more. So I would stay away from stressing about it if all else fails and you have no way out, no options at all, and you do mess up on not eating nutrient-dense foods. Try not to feel bad about it and don't go downward on a, like a... a avalanche kind of feel or like a snowball kind of effect just it happened um, try to avoid it next time try to learn from what happened there to get you to that place but don't dwell on it for days just get back on the next time you eat M K V 15 tips for meal prep slash healthy eating for college kids on a budget Ooh, college kids on a budget you want to talk on that one this you talk about this all the time <laughs> so you can go for uh, it yeah, when I was in college, I was super broke. And I, I mean, you might be more broke than I was, um, but I don't, obviously we don't know what your budget is, but when I was in college, I had about 45 to $55 to, to eat off of per week. And I hated having to do it, but um, sometimes it's what you gotta do. But I was able to get, I would go every week and I would get about six pounds or the five pound frozen bag of chicken. Um, and that was usually like $6. Uh, and then you can get frozen ground, or not frozen, I would get ground beef, uh, ground turkey. And I really got rid of all the unnecessary items. I didn't have any luxury foods. Um, 
no fancy veggies. I would have like broccoli, uh, green beans, canned green beans. Um, and I was able to eat under the 45 to 55 dollar per week. Um, so, so it's doable. Let's keep it basic. Um, yeah, protein and veggies are and not... eggs. Sorry. Yeah, and eggs. And I, I wasn't, I can say I wasn't doing the. I wasn't blessed enough to be able to do the expensive things like uh, Greek yogurt. Uh, Five dollars a tub, almost freaked out. You know, the first time I ever saw Sydney buy it, I was like, "Oh my god!" Uh, but it's definitely doable. You just have to really dive down and go back to the essentials. Keep it basic. I would yeah, say. I mean, a, an eighteen thing, an eighteen egg carton is about a dollar eighty mm -hmm. right now. I think you might be able to find it cheaper somewhere, but. It's definitely doable. Yeah. Elsa Hatchum says, I have lupus, can I do your workouts? Um, well, we will be praying for you. We hope you're dealing with that okay, but I would definitely say speak with your physician first. Everyone is gonna be different in terms of, you know, what phase they are in, you know, for you it's lupus, for everyone's health individually. I would say before all else, ask your physician. MKV15 also asked, what are the best way to get rid of love handles? Um, love handles, diet. Your nutrition has got to be really dialed in. Um, I hate to... to <laughs> a helicopter. Um, yeah, everyone's body gets rid of fat in different areas at different orders. That's all determined by your genetics, so maybe you'll lose um, your belly first, maybe you'll lose your butt first, maybe you know, you'll know you come off your legs, but wherever it is, it's going to be determined by how uh, consistent you are with your nutrition. And that's it. That's all. That's good. <laughs> thank you if you're still here. Uh, but thank you guys for submitting your questions. I hope that we helped you out a lot. Um, any questions that you do have, I hope you continue to submit them and we'll try to get to them um, in the weeks ahead as best we can. Um, thank you, Pumpkin. Yeah, I see what you did there. For reading out the question. And thank you guys, as always, for supporting us, for sticking with us. And we hope to just make your journey a lot better every single time we get on here. All right? Now, for the grand finale. What are we working on the entire time we were doing our question and answer? Ta-da! Can you even see it? Can you guys see that? I think so, a little bit. I think so. We officially reached 30,000 subscribers! Woo! I'm so excited! Thank you guys so much for sticking with us, for letting us be a part of your journey. Um, 30,000 of you have trusted us either to work out with us or to listen to our question and answers, and we can't thank you enough. We hope we continue to add to your life and to your journey. Good? Good. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in. Have an awesome day!